Okay, hello. So, um, we, last week I sta started playing around with Polymer because of the GA class. So we went together, some of us built, um, tried Polymer out. And then I managed to get a chat up with like room functionality in it so you can switch tabs and stuff like that. Significantly fun. So if you want to play around with it now, you can actually go to this site, log in and then we can start chatting on the site. So basically the functionality is that and you can create a room, whoop, you can create a room, you can join, you can, you can create many, many of the same rooms and it will show the same things, but yeah. So you can chat if you're in here, um, you can try chatting if anyone wants to. Then basically how, uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, how Polymer works, the difficulties we encountered when working with Polymer and stuff like that. So if you take a look at the app, oh yeah, quick self-intro, I'm Zell. Uh, Twitter handle is LWK, website, that's it. Okay, fine. So, if you take a look at the HTML, right, it's quite, quite nice. Template on bind, which is, which is provided by the Polymer starter kit that we used. Then, chat room, ID, chat. End of story. So, anyone use web components before? Awesome. So Web Components is actually quite fun because you can scope things into its own components and it's not affected by other, other, other things. So for example, one of the problems that people usually have with CSS is that huh, the styles are global and then you have to start creating BAM styles and all that, all that weird, naming fun, uh, fun, uh, weird naming conventions to help you manage the styles. But if you take a look at um, a basic Web Components thing, you'll see something like this. Like the styles is generally all in the HTML file itself. And you can just start according to whatever you want to call it. You can say paper menu. And there's this, this one part where I totally didn't bother and I call it a close button, X, and it worked. Because there's, there's no way you can have naming conditions when you're building apps in Web Components. So Polymer builds on this Web Components framework kind of thing, which allows you to write classes that are isolated from any, anything else in the world. So that's pretty cool. That's one thing good about Polymer right now. Um, if you started with the Polymer starter kit, you'll probably faint from the, the overload of things in here because after I, I pared down everything, then it became like this. Previously, it was just one big chunk of like 200, 200 three, 400 lines of codes right at the start. And we couldn't figure out how to handle the routing stuff. So the routing, Basically, it's set on the route JS that where you where you start use where you use page JS and do an app dot route and then set the route to whatever route you want it to be. Then you have to pass that route with this weird square brackets thing, which is a single binding. Then Polymer has like single binding and double binding at the same time, so it can, it's a bit weird sometimes. And you can fire JavaScript eventlessness and events all around the place. So some people who don't really know how to work with Polymer will start writing document.event listener, <laughs> like normal JavaScript. But if you're working with um, Polymer much, uh, a bit more, then you probably start writing things like, let's say for example, in the chat, in the chat form, so the chat form is this one. What happens that, is that when you type a message and you click on submit, we, I fired a submit message event. So this submit message event is captured by my chat window, which is slightly bigger, that contains a chat form, then it says, hey, on submit message, which says, see submit, fire submit message, right? So you listen to the, the, the event with on submit message somewhere in your HTML. And the HTML file is written in the same place as the JavaScript and the, H and the CSS. So you find you, you probably have like big files all over the place. Not a very good thing to play with sometimes. So on submit message, then you handle your message event as per normal. So instead of um, doing this, what I see is that sometimes people go into document.event listeners and then you have document.event listeners all over the place, which is a bit off, which a bit scary. One challenge, um, okay, next point. One challenge we had with this chat app thing is that we have to use socket IO. So if you know about socket IO, you, you know that it needs to listen to events. So like socket, uh, on something, then you emit something. The problem with 
using Polymer and Web Components is that Web Components isn't ready at the start. So you can't say login and then socket, global object socket equals to socket, something like that. So what you had to do was to attach it to an element. So what I did in this case was to attach it to app. App meaning the big DOM element outside that we did a DOM binding, ID app. All right. Then within the chat room, you, you have to, we have to create a event listener. Like this is my only event listener, socket connected. That is fired by my login. So upon logging in, I would, upon logging in, you would get this socket connect con uh, event. Then I'll fire another event to say that it's connected so I could attach my socket and do all the socket stuff, which is kind of like mind bending in a way because it's not really structured that way usually. So, um, yeah. Shady DOM, uh, Shadow DOM. Shady DOM. Shady DOM, yes. <laughs> um, web components, uh, no, no, like Shadow DOM isn't supported by all the browsers out there right now. So, what web components does is that it creates this thing called Shady DOM. <laughs> so, <laughs> If you take a look at the, the HTML, it's actually quite interesting. So um, let's open it up. So you see like, things like that. Like, if you do web components, you'll probably see the hash and then shadow DOM. You, you'll see shadow DOM clearly. But when you do this, you can't have like, classes all over the place. And it's classes and classes and classes and classes and classes. And on almost every class, you see this style scope thing. So there's a lot of style scopes all around the world. So at first, it's a bit hard to get. But generally, when you're, you're styling this, it's just um, there's this team styles. There's like global CSS style that you put in there. And all of these styles won't affect your, web, your components. And then your component style won't affect the global stuff. Your, com your component styles won't affect another component. It's kind of weird in, in a way. Then you have to start playing around with deep selectors and and shadow selectors, and, which is interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, basically covered almost everything. Oh yeah, one thing I realized in, like, one of the big things that uh, Polymer always says, the, the, the good thing about Polymer is that uh, you can, yeah, you have these things called po Polymer elements. So this, this one big list of elements, <laughs> is it? Yeah, so. Like this whole big list of stuff, like whatever Google has, like iron elements, paper elements, Google web elements, and stuff like that. So if you go into paper elements, you'll see a bunch of elements as well. Like, oh, this is good because you can just plug and play stuff. All right. Then what I realized was this wasn't really good because you start to realize that, hey, clap. You see that thing up there? The home button goes missing. I have no idea how, how, why or how it goes missing. The height is supposed to be 64 pixels. It's set in the CSS. I even imported it. And when I inspect element, it's 64 pixels. But when I type and send something, it appears again. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why till now. So like, this is using paper, one of the paper elements. So if you wanted to try playing around with Polymer or use some of the paper elements, I would suggest you use the very low level ones, like input, um, submit buttons. Don't use the higher level ones because you have to start writing in their HTML format. Then you start to realize that, hmm, mm, okay, something weird is wrong. And say, hey, why is this style at 64 pixels and not? And you, you can't start styling your own sites as you want it to be. So, yeah. Quick one. Done. Uh, with all these inline CSS styles, how do you manage to keep a consistent style? Like, like, how can you modify that overall appearance of your app? How do you modify that? Okay, good question. So, like in in in, in Polymer, what you can do is that you can do like shadow DOM. Like, I think it was like this, and shadow. Then this kind of thing will go in one level into the shadow, so you can style that one component. But if you wanted to style something like the whole site, you have to use this kind of weird selector called D. I think that's being deprecated. It's, that it's being deprecated, and there's nothing to replace it right now, so I have no idea what's going on next. I thought there was, but I'm not quite sure how you want to implement this, but something where the, uh, the component itself can expose 
properties that you can set on the component. Um, but I'm not sure if that works yet. Do you know that? I have no idea. Yeah, well, oh yeah, one thing, if you, if you want to learn Polymer, this is a r real story that a friend of ours had. He started watching Polycast from episode one. Then midway into it, he discovered that the first 20 episodes were deprecated, so don't even watch that. <laughs> <laughs> then zero, Polymer 0 0.5 and Polymer 1.0 is totally different. Like the core elements are deprecated, so like things change very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay.